Stop me if you've heard this one before. This might be the best sounding integrated amplifier that I've heard in a long time. Yeah, I say that a lot. And truth be told, it's kind of hard to find a bad sounding integrated amplifier. Most of them just sound great. And it's the really small differences between them that differentiate great sounding from good sounding. And if I'm being honest, most of it is personal preference. This amp ticks almost all of the boxes. It's got tone controls, dual sub outs, home theater bypass, 200 watts class AB into eight ohms, 350 into four. It also has a wealth of connectivity on the back. It's got three RCA inputs, a pair of balance XLR inputs, three coaxial, three toss link, a USB audio input, a moving magnet photo input, Bluetooth, AAC, and aptX. It's got ethernet for system updates with use for home automation systems, RS-232 for integration with automation systems, and two sets of 12 volt trigger connections. It should be noted that the ethernet connection is not like a network audio connection. It is just for updates. If you wanna do any sort of streaming, you need an outboard streamer or a computer. Secondly, the PC USB input is the one that you wanna use if you wanna stream MQA encoded music from Tidal and PC resolutions above the units other digital input limit of 24-bit 192 kilohertz. This has everything you would need it to have, minus HDMI eARC, and it retails for $31.99 US. With the wealth of connectivity on the back of this unit, it leads me to the question of like, what are people actually connecting to this unit? I'm more curious, and maybe those of you watching, just maybe comment below, of like, what are you actually connecting to an integrated amplifier because like for my sample size of one, I would connect a CD player, turntable, home theater receiver, maybe my DJ mixer if I have this unit in the same room as it. Um, headphones, two subs, and computer. Other than that, I, I don't really know. So if there's anything other that you guys connect, maybe, oh, game console, I don't play any games, but yeah. The industrial design of Rotel's components hasn't really changed much over the years. And while it's not exactly my bag, I can respect the fact that they've remained consistent over the years. And for loyal consumers, if you were to have bought a Rotel product a few years ago and then you buy one of their new ones, you're guaranteed that it's gonna look the same and it's gonna match up within your system. I mean, I've been bitten before with that amplifier you see back there that's not connected to anything, the Cambridge Audio CXA60. I got that like just a few years back and, and then I got the CXN V2 and that was both in silver and then Cambridge just switched up their lineup and just went all space gray with their components. And then when I got the CD player, it just doesn't match and it looks kind of odd on my shelf and so I never really have the two connected. The Rotel is solidly built and it looks expensive. If you could ignore the screen and the remote. The screen's a bit of a letdown in that it's kind of like a old school calculator display and it's not overly befitting of this product, which makes me just think of like how much better this unit would look like without a display. The remote, I mean, it's just awful. I mean, I guess I could understand. You know what? No, I can't understand. It's horrible. And it looks like it's from 1985. I, I just, I don't get it. The one that comes packaged with the S14 is significantly better and I wish they just used something like that. But this one, I mean, it's bad. I use this amplifier in both hi-fi and in a home theater setting. And I loved it in both. And to the tail end of my time with this product, I left it in the home theater setting most of the time just because it fit in so well. And it was, I guess, like a dual purpose home theater and hi-fi setup anyway, so. I found it to work best there. More on that after. Stuff I had connected to this was damn near everything in my house. When I first got it unboxed, I put it on my DJ shelf and had it connected to the Quadravella ones that I just got in for review. And I mean, new amp, new speakers, everything I played through it sounded brand new. And of note, a little old was from Bjorn on Good Looking Records. It's like God Chord with Inside My Soul on the flip. I mean, both those tunes are incredible. They're old school atmospheric drum and bass tunes, but God Chord sounded as big 
and he, as huge as I've ever heard it. Oh, I also had the BMW 610 sub connected throughout the course of this, but I've never heard this song in a club. It's just like that stuff never got played in Toronto out and about. But I did find myself just like stepping back from my turntables and just taking the music in so much so that I ended up just putting a chair in front of my turntables and just putting records on and hearing them again for the first time. Uh, ditto for like hard noise from Dillinger. Like that was just like, it's almost like a big, dark, but stress relieving tune for some reason. I don't know why. It's just, just, yeah, it's good. Listen to that if you can. I also paired it with my Alva TT V2 turntable from Cambridge Audio, the CXC CD Transport, and what else did I use? My computer connected via PC USB with whatever tunes I had on hand. A lot of drum and bass mostly, just because that's the only tracks that I physically buy um, that are high res enough. The other amplifiers that I had in house to compare were the CXA81 from Cambridge Audio, my long-term loaner, and the Arkham A25, which is 100 watts class G. And yeah, both amps are outgunned in comparison to the Rotel. And the Rotel had tone controls, which puts it head and shoulders above sound-wise for me because I can augment the amp to my liking. And I did just that. It's been a few years since I got to review that preamp power amp combo from Rotel that this is the integrated version of. So it wouldn't be a fair or accurate assessment for me to compare this one to those in any shape or form. Like it's, I'm hearing in a different room, different speakers, different source components, different everything. But I will say that this sounds so good and so much like my memory of those that buying the separates over this is kind of a tough sell after hearing them both because I'm equally blown away by both. So unless you really like switching out your preamp and having a constant power amp, or you just like the look of separates in general, I would choose the integrated every single time. The phono stage is amazing too. I compared the internal one against the one that's inside the Cambridge Audio Alva TT V2 turntable. That's a really long name. And honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between them. Like they both sounded really great. And so the one inside the Rotel must be good. Ditto with the DAC inside the Rotel, like everything played digitally sounded great, whether it was the CD player, where it was music off the computer. And if I'm being honest, I was hard pressed to tell the difference between the digital inputs, even though the PC USB one is like the best spec version of it. I mean, I went with it because why not use the best signal source that you can, but I couldn't tell the difference. Playing the CDs, I connected via the coaxial with my Cambridge CXC CD transport and the last CD that I bought, I haven't bought a CD in a hot minute. So I was playing Cinematic Orchestra's Muffler, that album. Yeah, I know that's how long it's been since I bought a CD, but that album sounded as big and as expansive as I've ever heard it. It is an awe-inspiring soundstage, powerful, deep, tight controlled bass, gobs of detail, lots of air, lots of oomph, and like, providing that you pair it with great speakers, like I got to pair it with the Quad Ravella 2s, like they're a short-ish three-way floor standing speaker that require a decent amount of power to get them going, like a good 100 watts is perfect. And any similar floor standard would ideally make sense. Like I would choose the Silver 300 for Modern Audio or even the 500 if you have the room for it. Each one of those speakers requires a decent amount of power to get them going. Having more power than you need is even more beneficial because then you just have the headroom and you can get a bit more liberal with the volume. This amp works really well in a home theater environment too. With home theater bypass engage connected to the Marantz Cinema 70, with the Quad Ravella 2s as my fronts, powered by the Rotel, the Ravella 1s as side surrounds, the B&W 607S3 as my center channel, and the other one as the rear surround, with the Modern Audio Anther 12 taking care of the sub duties. This sounded amazing. And I know, like with all the theater systems I had in-house, like this one taps, like really? but I really like the way this one sounded. And like, while I'm waiting for speakers to be picked up and sent back, like this is a great use of speakers. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry.
Everything I watched via this system sounded amazing. Take Across the Spider-Verse. I mean, that movie is tailor-made for a home theater system. Like, the surround field seems like it's almost always engaged. It's always active. Like, there's lots going on. And the effect steering with this system was incredible. And the low end, I mean, it just kept on keeping on. It was always there, always present. And the dialogue was super crisp and clear. Like, I loved watching this movie with this system. My son, eh, not so much. I mean, he loved the first movie. Maybe this one's just a bit too complicated for him, but, you know, he's five, so, like, who cares what he thinks? Like, movie's good. Now, I did swap out the Quadravella 2s for the b 606 bookshelves as fronts because they would, in theory, have better cohesion with the 607 as the center. And, yeah, it did sound really good, but I really enjoyed it in two-channel listening because, again, having more power than you need was extremely beneficial with hearing this speaker to its fullest potential. And playing Permanence from Akuratad off the Conversation with Ghosts album, it's a beautiful ambient soundscape track. Like, just closing your eyes, sitting back in your chair, it just sounded so big and so nice and so warm and just, like, all the feels. Like, I, I lack the superlatives to just properly describe this, but... This amp made those speakers sound great. Look, I really like this amplifier from Rotel. And as much as I harp about its data design or less than refined aesthetics, there's no trash talking its sound. It sounds incredible. And now I totally understand the praise that's been heaped upon this product. And if you're looking for a product that you can just buy and just never replace, this is one that you should look at. And if for some reason you just need more power, it's got pre-outs, so you're covered off. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Cheers. I enjoyed the system so much, I ended up watching things that wouldn't be conducive to a home theater review. I binge watched The Americans, which is maybe the worst TV show to test out a home theater system. There's almost no surround at all. So much so that the Rotel ended up just powering off during chunks of that show because it wasn't receiving a signal. Ditto for my Korean movie rampage that had just went on. I watched Memories of Murder, I Saw the Devil, Train to Busan, I watched Old Boy again, uh, and you know, there's not a ton going on. It was great, but like, I mean, the movies were so engaging, I could watch them on a phone, like, to be honest, they're really good.